Hi there everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So today we're going to fire a bullet made out of mercury. This is a project that I've been going on for half a year. This was the whole purpose of the cold gun series of videos. You see, we needed a gun that we could freeze to very low temperatures in order to shoot the mercury. Mercury freezes at 40 degrees below zero, but it needs to be cooled down to liquid nitrogen temperatures, otherwise it's very brittle. So I know a lot of you guys are going to be saying, but no, shooting mercury is illegal. And in many cases it is. While I've been working on this, I've also researched into some of the laws, and turns out modifying bullets to shoot a poisonous material is illegal. Although why mercury is considered a poisonous material and lead isn't, who knows? Because lead and mercury are about the same toxicity. And also it's probably a bad idea to shoot mercury around and scatter it all over the place. And that is why I've set up this little bunker here so that I can contain it and capture any mercury that I drop and it's not going to scatter it all over the hillsides. Got a ballistics gel here, got a box of paper, solid rock backdrop. That mercury's not going anywhere except for right into the target. We're going to do an incremental test. So we're going to start off slow so we don't, you know, if the bullet does explode and send mercury everywhere, it's not going to be super powerful initially. And I don't know if you can see here, I've got a little blower to pull out the fumes so that we're not breathing them, but of course we're not going to be in here while the gun is shooting. Okay, so I've got some gloves on. This is a rubber glove on top of a leather glove. I'm going to put the gun down inside of this little flask. I'm going to pour liquid nitrogen on it and let it cool off. Now that we got nitrogen going, let's go ahead and turn this blower on to circulate the air. Or rather, you know, pull the air out. I want to come on. So unfortunately the chronograph's not going to work for us. The lights we brought and the generator are just not enough to run it. Uh, fortunately that's a problem with running that thing underground. But I think the uh, ballistics gel will do just fine. So now that this is pretty much cooled off to liquid nitrogen temperatures, we're going to load it with a lead bullet and 15 grains of powder. This is to be our control run to compare it to when we're firing the mercury later. Okay, control run, frozen cannon, lead ball. Let's turn on the blower again. Light it. Uh, let's turn that off. Let's put the gun back in this thing to co keep cold. Okay. Let's see where that bullet is. Okay, so the bullet is right about here. It only made about four inches into the gel, but that makes sense because I used a very light load, 15 grains of powder, and this is a much harder gel. I've got about 30% gelatin by weight in this. So let's uh, set back up and shoot it with mercury. Okay, so here's the bullet mold that I'm going to be using. This is for mini balls. So you can see here it's got a cavity with a cone in the middle to create the back end depression. So this thing is made out of aluminum, but I have greased it, so it should be fine. The mercury, I don't think it'll attack it. So let's uh, put in some mercury. I've got some right here. An old bottle of dental mercury. Let's see if I can cool this off without it spilling set it in here kind of sideways. I believe the mercury is now frozen. Let's cut the top off that ball. Just like that. Looks like it's got a bit of a cavity where it fell through as the mercury shrank. It became more dense. And now comes the part where I regret gluing it together with oil. <laughs> Here's the mercury bullet. I got the bullet out. So right here, as you can see, it looks exactly like the lead ball, except this one's made out of mercury, and it is a little bit heavier. Let's just leave it in here. Let's put the gun back in as well. Let's get everything cold. We're just about ready to fire. 15 grains of powder, just like last time. A little powder measure here. There it is. It fuses in. 
powder. A little bit of shake, make sure the powder's all the way at the bottom. Clean out frost, because that's the problem with this gun apparently. <laughs> okay. Here's the bullet made out of mercury. Let's load it. Looks like it's gonna work. Got this thing, I oh, we should have cooled that off. Although that was unquick. Out in here. And, uh, I see this on the front of it. Yeah, there's tiny beads of mercury there. I don't know if you can see, but it must have sprayed it out. So there's going to be a bit of a cleanup we got to do. But it looks like it, most of it was captured in the ballistics gel. Bring in the gun still. No. I think the powder cleared it. Okay. Look in this gel and see if we can see any blocks of mercury. Okay, so I found the mercury. It's right there inside the gel. It actually made it quite a bit further than the lead. See, the mercury is right here, and the lead made it into only right here. Yeah, right about there. So here's where the mercury is. Hey, uh, can you find those scissors? Let's cut this out of there. Okay. All right, let's see how this mercury looks. Should I just tr cut a big chunk of the gel out? So we can keep it inside of it. The six gel with the mercury in it. Look at that. That is cool. Oh, I turned the light off. That is cool. You can see it just sitting inside of there, a little blob. It's melted. Oh, it started running out. <laughs> oh, how about that? I got some mercury inside the ballistics gel. In fact, if you look over here, where I cut it out, you can see that some mercury came out of the trail. So the mercury melted all the way into the ballistics gel. That must have produced like a lubricating effect so that the bullet could actually travel farther. That, that is interesting. The mercury actually was able to pierce farther because it like lubricated itself. It's like an ice cube running across a hot metal plate probably. Also the mercury is denser and it weighed more so it would have a bit more momentum. But yeah, that's cool. We're going to get some lower liquid nitrogen and we're going to try shooting into a different type of target. So here is a 50 caliber lead ball. It's just a round ball of lead. And uh, I've also have the mold that I used to make it. This one's made out of steel, so it should do much better with the mercury. As you can see, it's got a round cavity inside. <clears throat> and it's smaller, so it'll cool down faster. But yeah, I'll be able to use the ball with a patch and this way the patch will take the brunt of the heating from the powder. That way the mercury won't uh, ever come in contact with the hot gases. That should minimize the amount of mercury that gets sprayed everywhere. Okay, here's 40 grains. Let's get 40 more. All right, let's just run this patch down and set it on top of the powder. Attach to the lubrication is freezing. That's gonna be a problem. I might have to go back to the mini ball. Yeah, I can't get the patch in there, it freezes and sticks. So, since the commercially made patches, uh, the lubrication on them freezes and sticks to the barrel, let's just use some dry paper towel to tamp it. And, I, and I'll just uh, put the ball in without a patch surrounding it. Just, just put a wad of paper down on top of the powder basically. Now for the ball, which I've decided to actually freeze. Stick that in there now. Okay, she's loaded. Let's prepare to fire. So here's our target. This is a box of paper 
just uh, I think I got like eight reams of paper in here. And I decided that I would actually use a metal plate on the front of it because I was going to shoot this anyway and this will just combine the two tests. So we'll get a penetration test into paper as well as having a piece of metal plate in front of it. This is an eighth inch thick cooking pan made of aluminum. I know you guys are going to want to see aluminum being shot with mercury because mercury destroys aluminum. So this is going to be interesting. clears the smoke and stuff out of here very quickly. It's good. I can see that there's a bit of a saltpeter that has rained down from the ceiling, but that's all right. We'll just sweep it up along with everything else. So, looks like the bullet did penetrate the metal plate. I don't know how far into the paper it's got, but we'll check on that later. For now, I'm just going to turn this over and we'll shoot the mercury into right there. Let's set that up. Same way. Ball of mercury. Let's put it back in there so it don't melt. Let's cool the gun down again. There's 40 grains. The other one was about this size, right? Okay. Where's that mercury ball? There's the ball of mercury. Stick that down in there. I like how it fits when it's already cold. Okay. Okay. It's cold. You're ready to fire. Let's turn on this fan. There we go. We have a nice second hole in the metal plate. Let's actually open this up and uh, see how far the mercury penetrated. Let's see what we got. So there's two holes. There's one down there by the two pieces of tape is the one with the mercury. Set that aside. I can see some mercury in the paper here. It didn't penetrate the two pieces but neither did the lead. Okay, let's examine the ream of paper and see how far it penetrated. I'm actually kind of surprised it only went through, you know, it didn't go through the whole ream. But I guess that means I got more paper for future experiments. Here we go, mercury, lead. Let's take off a few layers. Let's see what we got. Hmm. So there's the lead ball. It's really squished in there. Oh, it's got a piece of aluminum in there with it. Okay. Pull the mercury. Huh, it went right through it. It's actually farther in there. Oh, there's some mercury, you see it? Okay, let's set this here. Is this still in there? There's some mercury. Did it penetrate that much? No, that's about it. So, I'm just cleaning up now, and uh, here's that bullet that we shot out, the mercury that went into the paper. As you can see, it all ran out of the paper and is now on this little mat right now. I'm just going to sweep all this up, and uh, I'll extract the mercury from it later. So, it looks like the experiment was a success. We now have an idea of what a mercury bullet would actually do. I'd love to do lots more experiments, but, you know, Two bullets worth of mercury was plenty to clean up. And I'd also like to mention once again that I can do this legally because I've designed the gun specifically to shoot these bullets. I didn't modify any bullets and I had it all contained and it's not like I was going hunting with them. So it did appear that the mercury bullet could penetrate the ballistics gel farther than the lead bullet because as we had hypothesized it's because the mercury kind of produced a liquid layer that it could kind of slide in on with the low friction. That actually wouldn't be very good if you were like shooting an animal because the bullet would impart its energy slowly. It wouldn't shock and actually kill the animal. It would just put a hole in it. And if it was a deer, the deer would probably hop off and actually survive. 
is that the, the mercury wouldn't actually poison it. And as for shooting the aluminum plate, it didn't appear that the mercury caused very much damage to the aluminum. There was a little bit of oxidation around the edges where the mercury touched and a couple little places where it spattered. But other than that, the, the amount of mercury that actually stayed on the plate was so low that it just kind of flaked off almost immediately and uh, didn't damage the plate more than just cosmetically. Definitely I'm going to have to try shooting at a larger plate, but I think instead of uh, mercury, I'm going to shoot gallium at it. So until then, I'll see you next time.